All right guys, so in case you missed the last video in this series, I started going over the electrical work I've been doing here at the shop. I showed some of the materials I've been using, and I also showed how I installed the 120 volt circuits with GFCI protection. And so I was obviously pretty far from done at the end of that video, and in this video, I wanna go over the kind of rest of the electrical work, most notably the 240 volt outlets, which obviously if you guys have a garage workshop that you're wanting to kind of beef up, or even if you have an electric car that you need to install a charger for, I think some of this information will be pretty useful. So I started the install process by marking out the locations of the outlet boxes. And in my case, each one of these 240 volt circuits will be for one single tool. So these locations were pretty specific and I went ahead and laid everything out in SketchUp. That was the first thing I did when I bought this building was go ahead and model it up so I could figure out exactly where everything went. Because a lot of times on these bigger power tools, the cord is not super long. So you at least want it in the general vicinity. Once the locations were laid out, I went ahead and mounted the outlet boxes. And again, I'm using these 1900 metal boxes, which have a little bit more depth, so a little bit more volume, which is really good for some of these 240 volt outlets, which can get pretty big. And once I mounted them on the wall, I also went ahead and added the connectors for connecting the EMT conduit to the boxes. So just like with the 120 volt outlets, I'm gonna be using MC cable to get the wire from the panel to the outlet location and then switching over to EMT conduit. And so I needed to go ahead and cut some pieces of EMT and bend those box offsets and then mount a junction box up above where the drop ceiling will go. Once that was done, I could run the MC cable from the panel. And one thing I forgot to show in the last video that I definitely wish I would have because I got about a billion comments about it was installing these anti-short bushings. And I'm not even sure if these are absolutely required by code, but either way, it's a very good idea because as you can imagine, once you cut that MC cable sheathing, it leaves a pretty sharp edge. And if that edge rubs on the insulation of the wire, over time, it can work its way through, causing shorts, hence the anti-short bushings. And some MC cable connectors actually have this bushing built in, which makes it really easy because these bushings can be a little bit finicky. Another thing I didn't really specify in the last video was the code requirements for fastening MC cable, and it needs to be fastened every six feet and within 12 inches of terminations like going into a junction box. From there, I ran a bunch more wire. I had eight 240 volt circuits in total here in the shop. So that was a lot of MC cable and I made sure to go ahead and label each wire as I ran them into the panel to keep from getting confused later on when I landed all the wires. And one other very important thing to consider when running all of this wire is what size wire to use. And you can usually use some pretty basic guidelines to help figure this out. For 15 amp breakers, which the only thing I use 15 amp service for here was the LED lights because they don't pull much power. You you can use 14 gauge wire. Moving up from there for 20 amp circuits, you generally wanna use 12 gauge wire. And again, all of my 120 volt circuits are 20 amp circuits. Next, moving into the 240 volt circuits for a 30 amp circuit, you generally wanna use 10 gauge wire. For 40 amp circuits, you wanna use eight gauge. And for 50 amp circuits, you wanna use six gauge. And I didn't do anything above 50 here in the shop. And those are pretty good basic guidelines, but one thing you might wanna consider is if the length of your run from the panel is pretty long, like let's say close to or over 100 feet, you might want to consider bumping your wire up one size just to add a little bit more bandwidth there because you can imagine once you get to a circuit that long, there's a lot of resistance that builds up and that can cause tripped breakers if you don't use the right wire size. In my case, that wasn't really a problem. I think the longest run from the panel is about 70 feet, which was about the same at my old shop and I didn't have any trouble there. One thing I did do though is use a minimum wire size of 10 gauge for all of my 240 volt circuits, even though for instance, my bandsaw only requires a 20 amp circuit, so 12 gauge wire would have worked. And that'll just give me room to upgrade to a beefier tool in the future without running new wire, obviously as long as it doesn't use more power than that new wire would support. Next, I needed to add some outlets to these center posts. And before doing that, I went ahead and relocated this disconnect for a 100 amp three phase service. And when this place was a cabinet shop, they had that wired with a wide belt sander. And I would love to add a wide belt sander at some point in the future. So I went ahead and just kind of relocated that junction box up above where the drop ceiling would be. So that way in the future, if I ever get a wide belt sander, if I come into $25,000 that I didn't have, I will have that wiring there ready to go. Another thing I wanted to try to do before adding the outlets to these cinder posts was to get them plumbed. And I thought maybe I'd just be able to tap them with a sledgehammer, but uh, that was definitely not the case. No. <laughs> well. 
That might be fastened in some way. So with that done, I can go ahead and start mounting some of the junction boxes to the center posts. And since these were steel, I obviously needed to drill and tap some holes. And for that, I used my favorite little drill and tap bits. And these things are awesome. I covered these in my kind of electrical tools for beginners video. They drill the hole, tap the hole, and countersink the hole all in one quick motion. They just make this whole process super, super simple. And then I just use some 1024 machine screws to mount the boxes to the posts. The conduit bending work on these posts was a little bit tricky because I had to go around the beam up towards the ceiling. And so it took me a couple of tries, but really it was just another offset. And I used the bending app I've been using to get the measurements I needed. And it worked out after a few pieces of wasted conduit. So for this outlet behind me for my planer, I needed to use eight gauge wire and I couldn't find MC cable in that size locally. So I had to run EMT conduit all the way back to the panel. And after doing some detective work with my fish wire, I was actually lucky enough to find a existing run of conduit coming out towards kind of the center of the shop. And then from there, I just pieced everything together using plenty of junction boxes, making sure I had plenty of pull points. And once I had all the conduit run, I could go ahead and pull the wire, which was really simple with all of those junction boxes. I repeated the process for the last couple of 240 volt circuits, which were the furthest from the panel over in the CNC room. And unfortunately I ran out of that MC cable. So I had to do another run of EMT all the way from the panel, which was definitely a pain. And I didn't put as many junction boxes. So it was a little bit tougher to pull. I did use that fish wire and it was a pretty good workout, but eventually I got it pulled through. And one thing that was super helpful since I was doing all of this work by myself was this little wire vortex, which is also from Racketeers. And you can just screw this thing to the front of a junction box and it helps to guide your wire through without scratching the insulation because the wire can catch on the edge of the junction box, scrape off the insulation, and you probably wouldn't even know it until you go to turn on your breaker and it starts to trip because it's shorting out. All right, guys, before I move on, let's take a second to talk about the sponsor of this week's video, North One. North One is an online business banking and financial management platform designed to help American small businesses like mine take control of their cash flow. So I personally hate going to the bank, and with North One, I don't ever need to step foot in a bank again. I can send ACH or wire payments, make deposits, and set aside budgets, all from my phone or computer. I can also withdraw cash at over 2 million ATM locations. North One also easily integrates with some of my most used financial platforms like QuickBooks, PayPal, and Stripe. It only takes about three minutes to apply for a North One business account, and you'll get your own physical and virtual card to start making business purchases. North One customers pay a flat fee of $10 a month, and there are no hidden fees. This includes free ACH transfers, no overdraft fees, free deposits at over 80,000 locations, and access to over 2 million ATMs. One unique feature I love is North One's automatic budgeting tool called Envelopes. So you can create envelopes in the app with your own custom rules, and North One will automatically set aside a portion of your incoming funds in those envelopes. And this makes managing cash flow much simpler. So if you want to try out North One to easily manage your business finance needs, everyone that uses my link below will automatically get a $10 credit when they open and fund a North One account. Thanks again to North One for sponsoring this video and let's get back to work. So once all those wires were run, I could go ahead and land them all back here in the panel. And one thing I did have to do with the MC cable was go ahead and black out all of the white neutral insulation, because with these circuits, those white neutral wires are going to be used as one of the hots. And this is something we did at the old shop because we used MC cable there as well. The inspector passed that with no problem. So I think in the case of MC cable, it's okay, but that might vary in your area. And as you can see, I used my label maker to go ahead and label all of those incoming wires, which get confusing in a hurry. And this really helped when I was laying everything out and testing everything once everything was wired up and will also obviously make it a lot easier when I go to label the faceplate of the panel with all of the circuits. So once everything was landed back at the panel, I could go ahead and make up all of the outlet boxes and I left this one so I could show you guys. It is super simple. I think I know I personally was very intimidated by 240 volt circuits thinking, oh, it's twice the power. It must be twice as difficult or something. But in the case of all of these power tools, it's actually even easier because I have two hots and one ground. There's no neutral. The hots, it doesn't matter which side of the outlet you put it on. These are the style of outlets I like to use where you can just put the wire straight in. 
I had started to try to use another style of outlet, which is what I had wired up my bandsaw with at the old shop, since again, it only needs 20 amps, but bending this stranded wire into a hook is a total pain, and I didn't have any of the kind of ring terminals here at the shop to crimp on, so I went ahead and just switched over to one of these, and once again, since I ran 10 gauge wire to these boxes, this is a 30 amp rated outlet, so in case I do want to bump up my bandsaw at some point, I can do that very easily. And while we're on the topic of how easy it is to install 240 volt outlets, I just want to show you a 240 volt breaker. Once again, it's just basically 220 volt breakers put together. So you've got a spot for two hots. And again, in this case, I didn't need any neutral. So besides that, I just needed to connect the ground wire to the ground bar and the panel and I was done. And as you might remember from the last video, I have three phase power here. And that again, also seemed super intimidating and crazy. But once again, it's just basically 320 volt breakers sandwiched together. So you've got three hots going in and that's connecting to each phase on the panel and then you've got your ground so it, it's super simple i think you know electrical is one of those things i know i had built up in my head as this you know black magic but once you start to think through how it actually works if you kind of think of electricity like water i think it gets really simple and straightforward especially with this kind of stuff i mean i'm running one circuit to one outlet that's pretty simple once you get into three-way switches and all that stuff it can get a little bit more confusing but this is about as easy as it gets. So with that, the 240 volt outlets were done. So I could go ahead and continue on with the 120 volt outlets, which there were a whole bunch more to install. And so I started here on the kind of French cleat wall and the, I guess, work platform. I don't really know what to call this area, but my kind of woodworking workbench area, I guess. And on the French cleat wall, there are a lot of little kind of weird bins to get around the French cleats themselves. And I actually already had some outlet cutouts from when I had put up the French cleat wall at the old shop. So I went ahead and put the new boxes there and then just continued on down the wall till I got to the first corner. I have some of these corners to deal with and we did trim on the corners, which makes it a little bit tricky because I need to install some conduit going around the corner so that obviously I can have circuits going all along these walls. I was thinking of a lot of different solutions. I could try to trim away some of the trim to make room for the conduit. But then I started looking in this app that I've been using to kind of figure out some of this bending work. I think it's called Master Bender, but they have a segmented bend option in the app. And I think that's gonna work really well because basically rather than having one kind of smooth sweeping 90 degree bend, I'm gonna have two 45 degree bends. But basically I've got this flat spot. And so I put in the radius of the corner, which is about six inches, give or take. And this flat spot is gonna clear that inside corner trim. So unfortunately I realized after bending the two 45 degree bends on this 10 foot stick of conduit that I had forgot to add box offsets first. So I did have to just cut it and go ahead and add the box offsets and then use a coupler to put it back together. But overall the two 45 bend method worked really well. From there, I just repeated the process on along the rest of this back wall and the right side wall. And there were a whole bunch of outlet boxes here. I spaced them about every five feet and it seems like overkill right now, but honestly, I don't think anybody's ever said, you know, I wish I had less outlets. Once I got to the end of this run, I wanted to continue it on into the CNC room. And so to do that, I just drilled a hole through the wall and then added a junction box on the other side with a piece of EMT conduit to connect the two boxes. And I did go ahead and seal that box to the wall with some Lexel, again, to hopefully soundproof that CNC room as much as possible. And then I could go ahead and pull the wire to all the junction boxes. And this time, rather than trying to go box by box and kind of pulling wire between each one, I pulled wire from the very end of the run to the very beginning of the run, all five wires. And then once I had done that, I just pulled out a little loop at each box to give me enough slack to wire up the outlets. I would highly recommend that if you're making up a long run of junction boxes like this. Next, I went ahead and made up the boxes. And as I mentioned, I had a whole bunch of outlets to deal with and I had to use some new outlets here because I ran out of the ones I pulled out from the old shop. And so I made up a whole bunch of pigtails, went ahead and attached them to the outlets and then got those attached to the face plates and then attached some Wago connectors to pigtail the outlets together. And then finally I could install them on the boxes. And anytime you can batch out things like this, I think it makes the work go a lot faster than trying to do them one by one, like making up one face plate, going to install it. It's just a lot of wasted energy and wasted digging around for tools. When I got to the last box here on the kind of work platform, I went ahead and passed the wire through into the CNC room so I could continue it on from there. And I went ahead and repeated the process of installing more 120 volt outlets in the CNC room off camera since with the CNC in the way, it's kind of hard to get footage in there. The last run of 120 volt outlets to do were on these two center posts into the dust collection closet and then along this kind of right wall of the shop. 
Once I got to the lumber rack, I needed to go ahead and make some bins to work my way around the lumber rack. And I actually rented this super cool conduit bender for this project. And it was way, way overkill for my needs. But needless to say, this thing was super fun to play around with. I got the conduit bent once again using my app to help come up with the measurements and then ran the conduit all the way to the very front wall of the shop and then up that wall so that I could plug my new garage door opener into that outlet. And yes, my new garage doors are in and they are amazing and I'll be covering the whole process of them being installed in a future video. But anyway, after running all of that conduit, I went ahead and made up the outlet boxes. And with that, I could call the electrical work done, at least for the time being. I still got to do some work in the spray booth, but this was a huge undertaking. And I am really honestly pretty proud of myself that I was able to do all of this, all of the outlets work. I tested everything with my outlet testers and with my multimeter and everything checks out. So I think it turned out great. And it is so exciting to finally have some functional outlets throughout the shop. As you can probably tell, we've been working on the drop ceiling here, so that's gonna be in my next video. So go ahead and get subscribed and ring the notification bell if you don't wanna miss that. As always, I'll have links to all the tools and materials I use down in the video description below. And last, if you wanna support me, I sell merch. I have plans available for a lot of my woodworking projects, which hopefully I'll actually get back to uh, one day soon. And I also have YouTube members and Patreon set up, so go check out one of those. All right, thanks for watching y'all, and until next week, happy building.